Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yesterday and today we've talked a terrific amount about technology, um, but what, what do we need in terms of skill uh, and infrastructure? Our headline sponsor, Logicalis, is going to tell us, so please give a very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Chris Gabriel. Uh, good afternoon. Um, they told me they ran out of microphone, so I'm going to have to stand at the lectern. I think it's because I overran yesterday, and they're going to just shut the mic off after about 10 minutes. Uh, uh, also, FutureLearn has one more student. Uh, now I've just signed up for a MOOC starting September the 15th, University of Groningen, on uh, making uh, complex decisions in a, in a new uh, complex world. Um, well, thank you. Um, although there are two courses I'm interested in. One is uh, Edinburgh University are running a course on Scottish independence and Newcastle University are running a course on Hadrian's Wall. I'm not sure whether they're uh, interconnected or not, but uh, I didn't have time to sign up for all of them. So, uh, but I can recommend it. It's an extremely interesting site. Um, I was kind of nervous listening to the, the, the last three speakers about my presentation because it's a little bit technical, but I think it fits in quite nicely with the, the, the last speaker in terms of digital. Um, I think speed of digital is, is uh, hugely uh, accelerating. Um, but th where I slightly disagree is the reason I think some of this new agile digital works is because there's a huge amount of engineering that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, when, you build, when you build new bridges into new worlds, you kind of want those bridges to stay up. Uh, and I think there's a lot happening in our space which allows organizations of any size to really build more uh, agile uh, responses uh, to, to the world of, of IT. And it's a little bit technical, but I just wanted to overview some of the skills that we're now seeing emerging. Uh, if you employ people and you've got a large IT infrastructure, I think these will be interesting for you to go and ask your CIO. If you are a CIO, it will be interesting to find out how you're approaching this. And I think if the, you're in the general digital world, is it's just a little bit of understanding about what's going on in some of the cloud providers and the service providers to make this new agile digital world happen. Uh, again, Apple provides such a seamless service, not because their back-end systems are kind of hung together very quickly. It's because they engineer uh, the living daylights out of them to make sure you get the service that, uh, that you expect. So I'm going to kind of go through this quite quickly. There's, there's a couple of really horrible technical diagrams. Uh, but I, I think they'll just kind of show some of the, uh, the thinking that we're doing. And also, it takes me back to yesterday in terms of the new digital skills, is while some of the new high-level experience digital skills, web design, coding, are really exciting and interesting, there is a whole world of technical skills underneath all of this stuff to make it work that I think are even more uh, interesting if you've been in IT for, for as many years as, as I have and open up some new opportunities uh, uh, across, the, across the sector. So the, the pitch is called Fly by Wire and I'll explain uh, what that means in a second. We've also got Simon Dakin from National Air Traffic Control on a bit later. I know Simon really well and I was really nervous when I used this as my, uh, my presentation because he's really going to talk about Fly by Wire uh, a bit later on. Um, Logicalis, uh, skip over the slide, we're a large international business. I work for the group business. We're in 25 countries around the world um, and really strong in both emerged and emerging markets. Um, and one of the things about the technology space is these emerging markets are actually emerged already. So the Brazilians are investing a huge amount in new skills and training and infrastructure. So a lot of the stuff that we see as cutting edge isn't happening in North America and Europe, it's happening in Brazil and Ecuador and Paraguay and some of the places that are startup nations building their IT infrastructure uh, from scratch. And these are some of the approaches these guys are already taking. So we've talked about this for the last two days, the changing experience. Everything is easy, isn't it? Everything should be seamless. Everything should be digital. Everything should be agile. I just want to do it. The business wants it. Sales want it. Marketing want it. Go, 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 go. Right? That's happening. And we're seeing those services from Salesforce.com and Google and Apple and a whole wealth of different software as a service providers and cloud providers. The reason they can do that is they're making sense of all of this stuff underneath. They're making sense and they're building platforms which are hugely complicated in terms of their engineering, but hugely agile and simple in the way they provision a service uh, to users. Um, Google, I was talking to a, an analyst uh, a couple of weeks ago, a big global analyst, and they're asking me where I think the, the largest x86 shipments, which country in the world takes more x86 shi uh, six shipments than anywhere else. Turns out that Google is now a country, okay? Because they buy more x86 processors than any place on earth. Why? Because they replace their stuff in a constant churn. Why? Because they're trying to engineer a new experience all the time. 
So there's a huge amount of skills and capability that we need in our in industry to be able to deliver these new experiences. So if you're involved in anything at the bottom here, if you're looking at whether it's security, uh, whether it's actually legal technology, understanding the new commercial models around the cloud, the new risk models around that, how you, how you devise some of these new consumption models, um, there's a significant amount of complexity um, in our world that is, is, is happening and emerging. What we've got to do is harness that complexity, hence my, uh, uh, my enrollment on this course about making decisions in a complex world. Well, that's kind of what we're doing in IT. How do we make decisions around this new complex world? Um, I've been in this industry for 25 years. My first proper job was for a company called Cabletron who made transceivers and no one will, very few will know what a transceiver is. Uh, very few kids in the future will even know what a wire is connecting their computer to the network, obviously. Um, and it took four hours to do a customer presentation and we had one product which had four lights on it and I could take four hours to describe why those lights were really important and better than my competitions. I, we are in a dramatically more complicated world in terms of what we have to harness. And we're getting these new experiences. It, uh, wireless is a really good one. This hotel has wireless infrastructure. Um, and I know Cisco spoke about this a little bit earlier on with the Internet of uh, Things and everything. Um, is wireless isn't about access anymore. If we believe it's about access, we've kind of lost uh, the point. The, the, the access is the thing that the, the consumer wants, is what the, what the provider wants, is the analytics that come from that. So which direction people are walking around hotels, shopping centers, universities. Now that's interesting from selling you more stuff. It's really interesting from security, uh, from fire, from uh, the environmental aspect of a building. So just being able to connect to it, as soon as you connect to a wireless network now, even if you don't use the service, your phone finds it, potentially someone's understanding not who you are, but where you are and how you're moving and what you're doing. So the information we're pulling back from this information, um, where you're stopping, where you're not stopping, heat maps, this is hugely valuable to the operator of the service. And again, it comes with a huge amount of value, but again, a new level of complexity that we can harness and exploit if we have the right skill sets. Uh, we're doing some work in South America um, and talk about the Internet of Things. Everything has now got a sensor in it. I was, uh, I was saying yesterday, I was over in uh, the, la the global largest manufacturer of hydraulic pumps in the world in Geneva last month. Um, they're going to put a sensor on every single pipe and every single thing they do, whether it's a valve in an airliner, uh, an airplane engine, uh, whether it's in a, in, in a ward in a hospital on a drip, because they need that data. They want to predict when things are going to fail. They want to predict the quality of the service they're offering. All of that relies on these robust infrastructure and these agile digital infrastructures to make it work. And obviously, as we all know now, the world thinks it can go to bed every night and reboot. Okay? It's a constant cycle of upgrades. But those constant cycle of upgrades are based on robust, well-run technology platforms. They aren't based on, well, let's, let's cobble it together because we need to do it quickly. It's how do we build platforms to allow us to run in a more agile way. Uh, the, Welsh, the Welsh Government and our, our involvement over the last few years in terms of uh, the, the Welsh Government Network, a great example of a robust platform that allows more and more agility for the overall service. So we're shifting, in our view, from skills which uh, are going from technology-defined, technology-defined skills are really important, to service and software-defined skills. I think this, the, the software university that is trying to be started here is the most important investment that Wales could make because the world of hardware, of everything we do, is becoming software. Everything in your pocket that's hardware isn't really hardware, it's software. Everything in the data, in the data center now, everything in your network is going to move from something that is defined by hardware to something that is driven and defined by software. And everything will become interconnected and everything will become interdependent on each other, but driven through this new software world. Okay? The cloud is a software-driven world. So we're seeing this shift. Now, the technology skills are really important, but that technology skill is going to become more commoditized and the software skill is going to become more valuable. You will still drive the hardware in that way, but you'll do it through this software, this software gaze. And therefore, it's very much like what we're seeing uh, in, in, in all industries, and in the, uh, the, the motor car industry, uh, in fact, I asked Simon Dakin about his Volvo control software-driven car now. He's very excited about it. Keeps showing me the app on his, uh, on his iPad about his, his motor vehicle. But everything is going to be moved to this more. And I don't think we're going to get to autonomous in most cases very soon, but we're going to get to automated and orchestrated. Software is going to be the conductor of our, of, of our infrastructure and our IT services. So the more that we can build those skills in our organizations, the more chance we have of, of, of driving, not efficiency, I think we've done efficiency to death over the last few years, it's effectiveness. This isn't about IT efficiency, this isn't about doing more with less, okay? It's about doing less to deliver more, right? It's about true effective 
orchestration and automation of, of, of IT systems. And it is complicated, and it is technical, but these are the skills we're going to need. This is what service providers spend lots of money on. This is what cloud providers spend lots of money on to build these platforms. This will come pre-packaged in a lot of the technology that comes out from now on. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a, you don't have to be a, a massive organization to take advantage of this. You can be relatively small and still take advantage of some of these things. But we're going to move from lots of human intervention to lots of automated uh, and orchestration. And that doesn't mean uh, Terminator and Skynet and the world being blown up by o autonomous systems. It just means that w the IT infrastructure and platforms and systems will be able to respond better to your business need. This digital need will be, will be supported more, more effectively. My horrible diagram, um, all it really shows is the, the important layer here is the red layer. Okay? Your business is sitting at the top. It's using a whole bunch of different technology things, unified comms collaboration, different workspaces, different forms of, of data, different forms of communication such as video, internet of things. And it's going to live in this new software control world. So this layer in the middle is going to be the bit that makes all of this work together. And this is the conductor of those services. And then it's going to sit on some fairly robust uh, platforms, data center networks. But that's really where, where the focus isn't going to be. The focus is going to be on that red layer. So from a skills perspective, I really think that this is where we're going to see the innovation and the software university that, that's been spoken of in Wales. If it focuses on that layer, this is the bit that's going to change the world of IT to meet this new two-tier two uh, digital world that we need to all live on, whether it's inside your business or whether you take your services from the cloud and service providers. There's some fairly simple layers to go through. Again, I, I, there's lots of words on this. Uh, but again, I think this is fairly well mapped out. There's no kind of guesswork in this. There isn't kind of much futurology in this. It's not that exciting. I don't get to stand up and talk about 2050 and make stuff up about what the world might look like. This is kind of well laid out in terms of what we need to do, the skills we need, the focus we need, who we need to recruit, how we need to educate graduates in terms of IT, the things that service providers want. Okay? And I think this is a real robust model that we can start to invest and understand in our organizations. From a Logicalis perspective, a uh, good example in the automation orchestration piece, we've just kind of hired 100 people in South America to do this because it's a hugely valuable skill where you're building out these new infrastructures. We're setting up some center of excellences in the UK and specifically in Wales around the networking portion of this to be able to drive our networks in different ways. So there are jobs and those jobs will grow and those skills uh, will change. And our kind of pitch to everybody is everybody's a service provider now. Why? Because everybody loves the service provider experience. You don't walk into Vodafone, go and choose a handset and a price tariff, and then we say, I'm going to pay for this. The, the assistant says, oh, by the way, I just want to draw my network on the board for you to, to show you how it all works and, and where, where there's a black spot in your street, just to make sure you, they don't, they're providing you with a service. And they've built everything to be that service provider and support everybody to, to, to an experience and that's why I think IT within industry is going to go and IT within businesses and everybody's going to become a service provider um, and be able to deliver the services they need. And even if these labels mean not much to you, is I think they are incredibly important if you run a business and, it, and it's of, of a size with IT or whether you're an IT company, IT focused uh, uh, provider, is these are the skills that we think are going to start to play out that we're investing in and we're seeing value in terms of our customers. And the point with that being, going back to two, 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 spe two tier, two speed, is if we get this right, both external services and internal should run at, at real, not the same speed, because it's impossible for you to keep up with Google, it's impossible for you to keep up with Microsoft, it's impossible for us to keep up with those as well, is but a speed that is real uh, and valuable to our own organizations. And we need to try and imitate that, not just give up and say, hey, we can't run IT anyway near the, we should give it all to the cloud because that's gonna solve all our problems. We need to try and make IT more effective and try to uh, deliver that same thing. So if we can do the service provider model, if we can invest in some of those new skills, we can deliver a, a, a speed of IT internally, which is comparable at least with what's available externally, because the business isn't going to give it all away to the cloud. It's going to want internal IT uh, of some sort or another for as long as hopefully uh, I'm around, because it's a fundamental part of our businesses now. So again, I, apolog well, I, don't know, I don't apologize if some of the slides were a bit complicated, they were meant to be, but I hope that that gives you a sense of where we think some of the skills, some of the focus of the CIO, some of the focus of internal IT is going to be, should be, will be, um, because I think the, the, the function of IT is to transform choice and experience whilst maintaining some level of control. And I go back to the point that Apple gives you such a good experience is because it's under severe and strict control it isn't a free-for-all, and I think we need to understand that and how we're going to deliver that within, within our organisations.
Thank you.